So today, I'm gonna to show a game I played before you were born, two years ago, and it was played at the chess club upstairs. And I, I beat, yes, can I help you? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so well, we, got some, we got some older people in the class today. In fact, there's more adults in this room than kids. So I hope you're a kid at home, because otherwise they're very suspicious. Okay, anyway, you know, somebody needs to like get a bandage for her head. Uh, yeah, come on in, the, 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 yeah, the room's fine. All right, welcome to Pokemon class. I'm glad you entered. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna talk about a theme that most of you don't know. It's called overworked, okay? For example, let's say you start at eight in the morning and you finish at 11 p.m. You're overworked, right? Sometimes your pieces are doing too much, right? You're like, oh, my knight's defending this and this and this. It can do all that stuff, come on. Okay, so if you're a security guard, and you are, okay, and you have a job that's from 8 a.m. to noon, and you have another job from 8 a.m. to noon, how do you go to both jobs? Easy, send your clone to the other one. In fact, you can have clones of both of them and then stay at home, get two paychecks that way. Come on, think outside the box for once. All right, so this game, there was a lot of overworked, and in fact, not only did I trick my opponent, he even tricked me once with overworked. I can't even believe it, well he was higher rated than me. Okay, so we played your favorite opening, other than Paul Meacham. What's the name of this opening? Because I know he knows. Uh, you. Ninzo Indian Defense. Ninzo Indian, right. And that was named after the famous Grandmaster Indian. You. Nimzovich. What was his first name? Oh, he didn't know that one. Nimzovich. No, that was his last name. Yeah. Aaron. Wait, how do you know that? You feeling all right? <laughs> yeah. Man, somebody had their Wheaties today. Okay, so Aaron Nimzovich, the Nimzo Indian. If we called it Nimzovich Indian, that would take too long, and we're lazy around here. All right, now when I was 14 years old, I did something you've never heard of. I played in a correspondence tournament where you mail somebody your move, and they're like, uh-huh. Then they mail you back a move, and the game takes about a year and a half. And I'm not kidding, that wasn't a joke. Where he can back me up over there. Yeah, Paul backs me up. They don't do that now because of the internet. When I was a kid, there was no internet. Then Al Gore came along and we were all set. Okay, so in a correspondence game, I had the black pieces and my opponent played here and they beat me like I didn't know how to play at all. There was a good reason for that. I didn't know how to play at all. And after my opponent beat me, I said, I'm gonna play that move. And so not only did I play that move, I went to the t-shirt shop. This isn't even a joke. And I got a t-shirt that said Queen C2 exclamation mark. Okay, and you probably heard that at home because I touched the mic. So Ben's going crazy over there. He's like, what's going on? Okay, and I've been playing Queen C2 ever since, and I don't play the Dim Zone with black anymore. I'm the worst. Okay, so my opponent attacked my pawn because he's mean. My queen was here defending my pawn. Now it's not there, so my pawn is attacked. So the first thing I did was no, I cried. Okay, the second thing I did was I take. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, if it's free, it's for me. My opponent agreed, he took the pawn. Now, I like to pin things. As you can see, I pinned this microphone up here. Nobody helped me, I did it all by myself. Right? Yeah, because we're both named Ben, so it doesn't count. All right, now if I pin his knight, bam. Notice how his knight's pinned because I said so. So if his knight moves, I'll take his queen. That move's the worst move ever. And I'm really old, so I've seen every move. Okay, now, black has a really good trick, and you'll like it because tricks are for kids, so the adults won't like it. He can sacrifice his bishop, check. Then he can check me again. See how it's check? And then, when my king moves away, he'll take my bishop. No! So did I do that and lose the game? Is that what I did? Yeah. No. Arjun. I, I, I didn't like that. You didn't like that? What? It's your birthday. Come on. Cheer up. All right. So I played knight here, and he played knight there. And then I pinned his knight. Now, 
my knight, bishop's protected. Hooray. Okay, and he attacked my bishop. That wasn't very nice, so I moved it. Then he castled, and I moved my bishop. Let's see, where did my bishop go? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I went here. Is that a good move? Yeah. You guys aren't grandmasters, so you can't jump over pieces yet. No, no. So I played here. Now he unpinned his knight. That wasn't very nice. Now I can't pin his knight to his queen. Okay. Now, where did this guy go? I forgot. Where'd he go? Nowhere. Nowhere. What is he, a beetle? He's a real nowhere bishop? Living in his nowhere? Okay. So b6. Now his bishop has some possibilities. And he moved to one of them. Now... None of you have ever heard this before, so you're going to be really shocked. Rooks belong on open files. I heard that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, an open file has no pawns. And if there's no pawns, then rooks can move up and down, just like the clippers will move up and down the court today, okay, beating the, the hapless Houston Rockets. Right, Arjun? Yeah. All right. So... This is the open file. It's the only one that white has no pawns. Every other file, white has pawns. Files go up and down, and they have letters. That's the D file. Okay. What's the most famous file? The correct answer is, as Paul will tell you, the Rockford files. That's the most famous file. So I played rook to the D file. He played his rook to the open file. That wasn't very nice. Then I played my other rook to the oak. Oh, wait, I can't do that. Darn. I'll keep trying. You guys can wait a little while. Man, doesn't this thing know I'm a grandmaster? All right, hold on. Maybe if I, like, do this. No? Nope. All right. So I move this guy up, and then this guy will go here later, right? Okay. Now, he was afraid I was going to go knight here and take the pawn. What a chicken. Okay, so he stopped my knight from going here because he's mean. How did he do that? Yes. A6. A6. But I went there anyway because I'm great. No, I didn't go there. All right, now we're going to do overworked number one. I don't know how many there are, probably about seven. This is number one. This bishop is overworked. It's defending the knight on f6 and the pawn on d6. So I took the knight on f6. Bam. If he takes with the bishop, then yummy, 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 yummy. A free pawn. Notice my rooks are protecting each other because I said so. So is that what he did? Did he give me a free pawn? No. No. He, he, he took with the pawn. Right. Now, I wanted this pawn, but it's defended a few times. So I attacked it. Again, with what move? NE4, right. Okay, now he overworked me. He took me out back and over... Oh, wait, that's worked me over? That's one of them. Okay, he played knight to b4, attacking my queen because he's a meanie. And he unleashed, and the pawns, that's a fork, and he unleashed his bishop on my knight. That wasn't very nice of him. Okay, so I called the director. The director's like, can I help you? And I said, my opponent's not very nice. So they gave him a timeout. And then Arjun gave me a Kit Kat, the end. Wasn't that a good story? Did that story make a lot of sense? Did that story make any dollars or just cents? Right, this game was played in India, so it made rupees, right? No, it was played upstairs. Okay, so I played Queen B1, and I started walking around trash talking. I was like... I'm defending this, and I'm defending this. You got nothing. You're all talking a badge. That's what I told him. Then he saw the movie Untouchables, and he understood what I was saying. Amazing, right? If Robert De Niro's watching this, don't sue me. You with some crazy comment. That's not crazy at all, although it's not good. Knight takes a2 eventually. If you play knight takes a2 now, then I go bam. Okay, and then I get to keep my grandmaster title. Because now white threatens everything. The rook on c8, the bishop on b7, the knight on a2, right? But he did it the opposite way, because it was opposite day. Instead of knight a2, and I'll show you what your idea was, 
because your idea was really good. You were hoping I would take, and then you were going to take my knight and laugh at me. Whatever I do to you. But as Arjun will point out, he instead played bishop, e4. bishop takes e4. Man, I'm afraid to make this move because... All right, don't mess up because I'm a nice guy. All right, now I was like, thank you. And he was like, thank you. Now I'm down a pawn. When you play chess, is that where you want your knight? No. no. Okay, what would Hikaru Nakamura say? He would say, terrible, just terrible. Okay? You say that. Right, well, I say that too. Okay, now, if his knight's over there, I better checkmate him. I don't think his knight's protecting his king too good. In fact, I don't think anything's protecting his king too good. So I played knight to d4, and I was going to fork over here. Okay? And now he was like, I don't want you to fork over there. I called the director. I said, he's talking during the game. Okay? And it wasn't a kid's tournament, so he couldn't. So he played knight here. His knight defends. And his knight's not really silly over here. Now we have overworked number three. Okay? Number one, I did. Number two, he did. Now it's my turn. My turn, right? Okay, you see his pawn on f7, the one I'm highlighting? Okay, that's defending this pawn, so I can't take. And it's stopping me from checking him because he'll take. So his pawn's doing too much. So I took the pawn anyway. Notice how it forks his queen and rook. So he made the obvious move, okay. takes my knight, and then I gave him a check. Okay, and he knew me. So he knew that check was going to bounce, so he didn't accept that. Okay, don't tell the IRS. Shh. Okay, my name's Ben Simon if you're the IRS. Okay, and I don't know student loans anymore. Yeah, see? Yeah, I even know the story of your life. All right, so here he made the worst move ever. Terrible. Moving his king in the corner. What a bad move, right? Yeah. It's the only move. Right. Okay, then I checked him. Um, and then I checked. Um, all right. Now, if this was bug house, I'd play rook h7 mate and queen g7 mate and everything mate. But it's not bug house. This is real life. Sir? I think it's eventually going to become three time repetition. Eventually, if I play queen h6, you may be correct. Okay, and the only thing I want to draw is a picture. I don't want to draw this game. Now, if I'm going to checkmate him, I need more pieces. Sir? Uh, it's coming. Give me a second. So I played bishop to g4, and I'm going to take this guy. And that's going to be checkmate. Also, I'll take his rook. So he defended his pawn with queen to d7. Okay, now... I played bishop f5, threatening checkmate. He played the obvious move. <laughs> Takes. Now, we get back to your answer. Your answer? Yeah, eh, one of you. Yeah. What was your answer? Rook d4. Now, when this pawn was here, he could go there, and his bishop stops rook h4. Now he can't do that, because it's cheating. So his bishop can't defend h4. Here comes rook h4 mate. I'm down two pieces, but his king doesn't look so good. Maybe it needs like a dress or something, you know, put some makeup on. Then that king would look good, right? Now terrible getting checkmated. Okay, so he gave up and I won. No, that's not what happened. He didn't want to get checkmated, so he blocked my rook. Did I jump over checkmate? Yeah, no. I'm a grandmaster, of course I did. Okay, I took threatening me, and he's like, no, if you go here, I'm going to take your rook. Okay, but I got two rooks, one for each of them. Uh, the movie Tombstone, don't sue me. Okay, so how did I attack H4 again? Yes. Rook DD4. I thought you were stuttering, but you're right. Okay, rook DD4. Now, I'm going to play rook h4 and mate him. Ow. All right. Now, when the game ended, I said, excuse me, sir, 
but you should have played this move. And he was like, say what? In the game, he played queen d8, so his queen and bishop protect h4. That move loses, and I said, dude, you should have played here. And he was like, what? And the idea is, check. And now his rook and queen protect each other. You see what I'm saying? If his rook wasn't there, this would be checkmate. But his rook is there. Now I go here, forking his queen and knight. Even though that's not a queen, it's a rook. But I was close. Okay. <laughs> then he saves his rook. I don't know, here. And I get a knight. Well, I thought I did. It seems to me that white is three pawns ahead. I have six pawns and he has three, right? So I, he said, but white's winning here. And I said, I know. So he didn't like this because he's losing, but what he did was more losing. He got the prize for the most losing. It was actually a million dollars. Yeah, at least two kids believe me. And at home they're like, wow, I can lose it with a million dollars? If you don't believe me, ask Anand. Bam. Anybody, Carlson, Anand, nothing. You, incorrect. Did I win No, okay, so maybe. Okay, so he didn't play rook c7. I told you what he played, but it was one minute ago. Who remembers? Arjun. Queen d8. Queen d8. Now, lucky for me, if I put my rook on the h file, it's checkmate. Darcy agrees. Yeah. So if I play rook h4, he stopped all that. Where else can I put my rook? Hold on. Okay. Not Arjun. Rook f3. I played rook f3, and then rook h3 mate is coming. Okay, now he didn't want me to play rook h3 mate because my other rook can take his bishop. Let's say he makes a silly move. Is that silly? <laughs> Check. Check. Mate. Okay, so he didn't want to get mated because he was a 2700 grandmaster. He decided that would be bad for his rating. So he played f4. Well, after he, after he didn't play a, a5, I mean. OK. Can I jump over that now? No. All right. This is overworked number four and the best one. This is the best overworked. Even Paul will be impressed. Earlier, he was like, ugh, horrible. Right? He was leaving him mad, going to Froyo and crying, getting more and more Froyo. OK. Writing letters, why did I look at this terrible lecture? But now, finally, he will be impressed, even though he's already seen the game, right? Yeah. He's like, I forgot what he did now. All right, so the reason he's not getting checkmated is his queen and bishop are defending. So if I check, then he'll block, right? Okay. But his queen and bishop are also defending this pawn. That's overworked. He's stopping mate, and he's protecting a pawn. Which is more important? That's a tough question. Mate or a pawn? Mate. Mate. So I want him to move his pieces away from the mate defense. So what did I do? Arjun. Rook takes d6. OK, then for some reason, lots of trash talking commenced. Right? Yeah, yeah Arjun's always like trash talking. And I'm like, dude, you got to stop that. Right? Yeah. OK. He's been trash talking for 73 years. Right? True story, right? All right. Now, if he takes my rook, then checkmate's good for me. Because you win when you checkmate, right? Yeah, he likes that. He's like a checkmate. OK. Well, soon. So he played bishop h4. Now this isn't checkmate, is it? No. All right. So I put him in check. Here or here? Hmm. Here, here. I put h6 is better. I don't want to beat him too badly. He'll cry. Okay. Then I checked him again. Then I checked him again. Now this is very funny. I thought it was funny. You may disagree. I went to my computer, and I said, "What should Black play? What's the best move?" Right? And the computer said, "Queen f6 is the best move." <laughs> All right, man, when queen f6 is the best move, you probably should take up golf or something. All right, so he played king e7, and I played check. 
Now, he did something you've never done before. He thought for four minutes. That was the longest think of the game. Now I'm going to ask you a really hard math question. Nobody's ever solved it. How many legal moves does Black have? Yeah, one. And he's 2,700. Do you think he saw it? Yes. So why did he think for four minutes? Actually, no. Yeah, he, yeah, he saw it. So he thought for four minutes because he was thinking about like, what happened in the game up until that point, and he wasn't happy about that. He prefers winning to losing. You know what I mean? Okay, so he did the obvious thing, and it wasn't King D7. Anybody a Richard Nixon fan in here? Yeah, he gave up. Now let's pretend he didn't give up, because pretending's fun. Let's pretend he went here. Now, white has mate in two, and there's two answers. So you could find one of them. You. Um, rook D6? Rook D6 is very close. You're two-thirds right. What's two-thirds of rook D6? Yeah? That is two-thirds of rook D6, but I wasn't thinking of it, but you're right. I was thinking queen D6, but yeah, you're, you're right too. Queen D6... I recommend this move, and then mate. Or, as Arjun pointed out, rook d4. Now, I have a different math question. How many different king moves does black have? Y yeah? Yeah. Good answer, yeah. Zero is correct. So the only possible move is here. Solid. Then mate. So instead of playing king d7 and giving me my choice of checkmates, he gave up. Now, when grandmasters lose, are they really mad and grumpy? The answer is yes. But he wasn't. He was all happy. Okay, what kind of attitude was that? He was like, man, you crushed me. So I got to tell you a funny story, which you kids won't care about. But you at home will find it funny. When I lived in Europe before you were born, I used to watch snooker because that was the only thing on TV. So what do you want me to do? No, there was darts too. Okay, and in snooker, it's very strange rules. It's like pool, but it's more difficult. And the highest score you can get is either 147 or 148. But since it's been 25 years, I forgot. It's one of them. And you have to play perfect and always hit the highest ball in. Anyway, a guy did it on TV. He got the highest score. And when it ended, it reminded me of this game when he got the highest score ever and he won, he jumped into his opponent's arms and they hugged. Yeah, because it was like the greatest thing ever and his opponent was impressed. Usually when somebody beats you, you're like, Rrr. but he was like, wow, you're the greatest. Okay, that's sort of what happened in this game. He was like, wow, you play great. Okay, whenever I lose a chess game, I tell my opponent, congratulations, you're the best, right? Yeah. However, since I never lose, I don't have to say that too often, right? He's like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. No. Yeah, wait, no. Okay, sometimes when people lose, they're like, Rrr. now Paul never loses, he wins every tournament he plays in. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. But if he ever does lose a game, he'll be very gracious, right? Is that what you kids do? When you lose, you're like, good game, you guys are the best, right? That's the right attitude. Okay, there's only one thing better than losing a game and being gracious about it. What is it? Yeah? <laughs> Man, I'm like the second best comedian in this room. You. Game and trash talk. Ooh, wait a minute. That answer is better than mine. Now you're talking. All right. Now remember, when you beat somebody really bad, just before you checkmate them, you, you get in your car, you drive to the store, you buy a microphone, you come back, you checkmate them, you drop the microphone, and you leave. You got that? Make sure you do that next time, right? That'll work out real well for you. What? Man, some of the, you know, I was telling one of my six-year-old students uh, 12 years ago, he's not six anymore, I said, you gotta learn how to trash talk. Okay, and then when I left, he asked his mom, mom, how do I trash talk? Right? I was like, you ask your mom how to trash talk, man. But he really needed to learn how to trash talk, and now he's 24-70 rated. So, guess what, he knows how to trash talk. No, he still doesn't trash talk. Mm -hmm.